<laughs> That's got him. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> 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 little candy leg bass. That's what I'm talking about, son. Told you it was there. Oh yeah, look at that little buck bass. Matt, look at that, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. God, oh, he ate Folks, that thing too, huh? Look at that. Come on, buddy. We'll get you back in. That's a buck bass. Early in the spring, Canyon Lake bass. There we go. Look at that, huh? On a chigger craw, Texas rigged, with an algae bloom. <laughs> Matt. Water's a little green, huh? <laughs> out with my good buddy, Matt Shura. Going into my 20th year on fishing with Johnny Johnson. Congratulations Allergies on that, brother. Killing me, but oh. I'm out here. Oh. <laughs> 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 I just missed a fish. Congratulations, though. So. Thank you so much. And thanks for bringing us back out here. Look at the algae bloom, folks, and we're catching them. Matt's got it. He kind of dialed it in a little bit and came out here the other day and said, hey, dude, you want to go out and have some fun? Yeah. Tell came, us about what we're yeah. doing. Came out here with my nephew, uh, Fox, and shoot, we caught 10 fish, nothing real big, but had a really good time. You know, biggest was probably about two and a half pounds, but... Uh, had a lot of fun and you know Marty Lawrence with his uh, wife or girlfriend I'm sorry Patty yeah. uh, they came up here and caught some real nice fish some real big ones that the ones I caught you know were seemed to be smaller males like you were talking about yeah you know? yeah the little buck bass well I'll tell you what all we're throwing is uh what is it what, you're throwing about 17 pound test line like me 17 pound line 17 pound line and uh what size weight I have a 3 8 ounce tungsten what weight. I got Three eighths ounce tungsten weight with a three aught wide gap hook. I put a little bead on <laughs> because of the, because of the. Uh, I want a little noise down there with this algae all greened up. That could be two feet under the water. Could be a foot. I don't know, but. Yeah, one thing about the bead with the tungsten, the tungsten is so hard. Yep. If you use a glass bead, sometimes that glass can break and uh, make a sharp edge to cut your line. Agreed. That's why I've kind of gotten away from it, yeah. but I've fished it just like you for many yeah. years too and had good luck. You know, so I, I like have that had noise. that happen a few times, yeah. but yeah, I like the noise. And uh, a lot of times there's a trick, right? Should we tell them the trick? You can put a little uh, bobber stop mm -hmm. underneath the, the tungsten weight and slide it down there a little bit. You'll still get the rattle off the bead, but that little bobber stop will give it more of a spongy type feel to it, even on your knot. Protects the knot. Protects yeah. the knot Protects as well. The knot. I like so, to do that. Yeah, you could do that too. So yeah, especially when you're time. especially when you're fishing in heavy cover or something where you're getting snagged a lot and that weight pounds on that knot, you know, when you're pulling it out of the struck snags and that kind of thing. So I'll tell you what, <laughs> we just got here. We've been here maybe five minutes. <laughs> Uh, I'll have to excuse my voice right off the bat. My allergies are going like crazy, and you can tell why. But uh, <laughs> hence the reason I'm glad to have Matt in the boat today. He can help do some talking. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully you don't get us. Huh? Got him. Got him. <laughs> oh, I just tossed there. there, too. <laughs> He's a little oh, yeah, one. Little buck bass. <laughs> He's a little, little one. Little buck bass. <laughs> get him in the boat. Get him I'm in the dry. boat, son. <laughs> I told you I got bit right there. <laughs> you did, you got bit. He threw right back out there and caught that dude. That's the nice thing about using heavy line. Look at Don't that. Don't worry about that, all right. Little Canyon Lake bass. Well, that didn't take you long. You know, Matt, huh? those aren't quite the size we caught the one year you brought us here. <laughs> I know. You know what I mean? <laughs> what, what, when was that? I'm trying to remember when that was. I don't even know, but nice fish anyway, though. You know, fun. To, they're, they're hitting it so hard. I, they're really hitting it. Turn this so, thing. Is there a rock I got to worry yeah, about? Yeah, back out a little bit because we have out a, a, little bit, a, a little reef, reef out here. Yeah, this well, is just, a neat little rock pile we're fishing right here. Well, get us back on it, too. <laughs> yeah. That's the thing is if you can't see, you come with somebody that, that can see. <laughs> <laughs> you see the graph right here? That knows it real well. We're in oh, yeah. four foot of water and this, this boulder pile comes out. So we're, we're catching these fish anywhere from five to 10 foot. There's some good rocks, some good boulders, that kind of thing. And those fish are, I think, kind of staging out here, you know, getting ready to move into the cove to spawn, right? Oh, I'm loving it. Yep, that's what they're doing. These, <laughs> when you're catching little fish like this, when they get up shallow, they'll be the first ones to move up in there. We're here early spring. What's the water temp? So 67 oh, now. Oh, it's during the day though. I mean, it yeah. just, I mean, we just started having these sunny days <laughs> for the last week and a half. So these, these, these little male bass will get up there and start making beds. And, but don't be surprised if you catch a big female bass, you know, don't be surprised at all. And I guess we should tell them one thing, Matt. I'm excited about today. 
This is the first day, the very first day you're on the venture with us. I just started this motor today on the brand new Fishing with Johnny Johnson mobile, the Z21 Nitro, baby. The maiden voyage. You betcha. So, it's awesome, beautiful boat, man. Just every <sighs> every year they just get nicer and, and it, they make, they've made so many improvements on them. It's just incredible. Oh, and Graphics did a great job on the wrap and we're good to go. So we figured we'd come out here and do a little fishing and kind of break in the boat to boot. So we that's got a couple big tournaments coming up. You caught the first fish out of it. I did too. <laughs> <laughs> I caught the second fish. It's very important that you match your rod with what you're doing. If you're Texas rigging and, and you're throwing 17, 20 pound test line, oh, I got stuck. You yeah. don't want to be throwing a medium action rod or a medium light rod. You want a medium heavy to a heavy rod. So you want, we're using the Taipan series today. And, uh, this one's a really nice rod. It's a 7.2, and I'll tell you what, it's, oh, I got it loose. It'll, uh, I, it's got a lot of backbone to it, and I can feel everything down there, but always, always make sure that you match your rod with the size line and the, the type of fishing that you're doing, you know? Get a good tip on it. Boy, you can feel everything coming across there. Yeah, it's rocky. Wow. That's one thing nice about tungsten as well. Tungsten over lead. You can really feel what's down there. You can feel whether it's rock or, or sand. Yeah, that combination with the tungsten, as hard as it is, and the fluorocarbon, you know, with the less stretch, yep. it's just, you feel every little scratch. You know, you picture the surface of the rock, when that weight's dragging over that surface, you just feel every little nook and cranny in that rock, and you really get a mental picture of what you're dragging across when, you, when you're fishing, which is, which is awesome. Got him that time? Yeah, I had to jiggle it. <laughs> I had to use my jiggle technique. <laughs> nice. Look at this, son. <laughs> nice oh, fish. He ate it. That's a nice that fish. That fish ate it. <sighs> Got it. Hold up. Uh, uh, there we go. Got it out of there. <laughs> Little book bass. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, son. Yeah, that fish, <laughs> that fish ate it, huh? <laughs> you know what I had to do is I had to sit there and I had to, to jiggle it a little bit. And I'm like, was that a bite? And then I jiggled it again, all of a sudden, yep. and he hit it. You know, that's the thing is even though we can't see that they're up shallow making beds, that doesn't mean that you can't just cast and throw out there and fan cast like what we're doing to catch these fish. And uh, Exactly, and hit areas where you would imagine them making their beds, you know? Exactly. Like, like that. Oh, <laughs> That's a kid, I miss Every them. time you turn around and talk, man. Every time you turn anyway. around and talk. Anyway. <laughs> Look at that. Darn it. Just a little baby prawn. <laughs> Matt's missing fish. Uh, well, he pulled it down. Well, that's when you know you're coming over rocks, too, is every time you catch a fish and that stuff, feel your line. Boy, he bit me up pretty good. And check your hook, too. Check my hook. The I'm hooks. gonna have to rehook. Yeah, when you're dragging over these rocks, but yeah, just a four inch chicken crop. Just a simple, simple technique that, you know, with all the drop shot and all the shaky head, all the icky wacky, all the nail head, yeah. you know, we kind of, you know, right? We kind of get away from just a simple Texas rig, uh, Texas rig combination. It's, it's a simple, uh, effective technique and it still catches fish. I still use it on beds every day, even with white, with white oh, when exactly. I see it, you know? Exactly. So, well, that's, yep. that's two I've missed now. Hey, you get them. <laughs> I need to retie too. I'm in, I'm impressed. Yeah. I'm impressed with this little lake. I'll tell <laughs> you what, Canyon Lake, and there's not near the pressure on this lake right now as what's on Saguaro, right? There's a couple people on Saguaro right now. Yeah, I would say so. <laughs> it's hard to find a parking space. I gotta but but Saguaro's clear and those guys are, are catching them on beds. Yeah, they're having a fun time doing that, but it's kind of nice just to get out here a little piece, more peaceful, not near the boats out here, and still catch some fish. I just got bit. Got him. All right, I saw oh. that. I saw your line <laughs> jump, dude. I'm like, he, I knew he had a fish. Good job, Matt. Get him to the boat, son. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what oh. I'm talking about. Now, that's a better fish. That's not bad. That's a two pounder, dude. <laughs> Man, he, he thumped it a couple times. He, he thumped it, thumped it, and I felt nothing, and I think it was slack. He had it. 
but I there saw he is. I saw his line jump. I'm hey, like, oh, was that a fish? It's one thing you don't. One thing you have to remember: fish don't have hands. That's right. <laughs> fish don't have hands. When you feel that thump, they didn't pick it up with their fin and start running with it. It's in their mouth, you know. He tells me that all the time. I give him the grief all the time on that, you know. You know, really, in all seriousness, this is a lot. Of, this is a fun rig to throw. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> He's waving to us. That's cool. He's waving to us. I don't know. Hey, we got all kinds of folks coming out here, but but here's the deal. Back to the fish don't have hands. There thing. you go. All right. If let's you're do throwing it. a 10 inch power worm or a 12 inch power worm, and you get thumped, you got to let them eat it. It's it's a big bait. Sure. A lot of times they don't have the whole thing. Makes you sense. You got to let them swim with it. Carolina rigging when you're dragging, you want them to take that whole big lizard in or whatever, and you want to feel the weight of that fish. But more, there's a lot of times where you, you get bit and you want to set the hook. You showed me that at Apache well, that one night. Well, here's the deal. In all honesty, <clears throat> Matt's right. So it's really a catch-22. But what's really cool about today's plastics is fish will hold on to them. And, and so if, as long as they don't feel you tugging on the end of it and it feels unnatural to them, if you let them keep thumping it, you want them to take that worm down, that big worm. But when you're throwing a little contact pack bait like that, a lot of times they just put it right in their mouth. And you better get them. In this time of year, in the spawn, these fish are going to sit on little beds. And all they're going to do is put that bait in their mouth and spit it out of the nest that quick before you can set the hook. So usually the first bite you feel is them inhaling it. The next bite you feel is them spitting it out. So that's something to think about when you're doing early spring fishing. Now, Matt, you have been on this lake in the spring, summer, fall. What really is your favorite time of year to fish this lake? Just out of curiosity. I know the folks at home want to know because <laughs> you're on this lake. You had the state record here. What's your favorite time of year to fish this lake, really? You know, uh, honestly, the night, night fishing, it's just you have the lake to yourself. It's, you know, it cools off real nice here at night, and you have that chance to catch that 10-pounder on any cast. So honestly, uh, my favorite time of year is, is just coming out here night fishing, throwing Texas rig, you know, baits like we're doing here, or Westy worms is what we used to always throw. And right before the sun goes down, yeah, throw a, throw a crankbait, shad pattern crankbait, and when, once, it, once it gets dark, get your uh, Texas rig or Westy worms out and hope for that 10 pounder. There, there's a lot of them in here. I tell and you they what. they bite at night. We've, yeah. I've done night tournaments with uh, Matt and we've, we've had a lot of success with night tournaments, I can say. Uh, we actually won the ABA championship last year and won the boat and and uh, doing the night fishing stuff. Of course, we won the boat during the day at Lake Mead, but we did we qualified through the night circuit. But we've had a lot of fun fishing at night. And I'll be honest with you, ninety probably what ninety five percent of our fishing has been uh, Texas rigging. Yeah, at night. it's hard to go wrong. They want that bait, that weight close to that bait where when those fish hear that noise, you know they're looking for that noise and that bait's right there with it. Hey folks, for my tip of the week, one thing to always remember this time of year, when you're going down to the bank doing what we're doing, we're having a lot of fun today, but you can always go back in those areas. You know, where you caught those males a lot of times, the females might be roaming around. A lot of times the first fish to hit your bait this time of year will be that male trying to get it off the nest or when it's making a nest, but that female swimming around, sometimes you can go back through there and you'll catch a few big ones doing that as well. Even if you can't see with all this, you know that they're around there somewhere. So don't be afraid to fish the area a little bit or fish that particular spot again after you caught a fish and, and uh, you might be able to pick up one of them big females. They slugged it. Nice. <laughs> oh, that's what I'm talking about, son. <laughs> that's a good fish. Not a bad fish there. Right off that little flat where that point is. All right. He slugged it. Slugged it. Not a big fish. Another buck bass. <laughs> <laughs> Got him good though. Tell you what, I would have loved a couple of those at Mojave a couple a couple yeah. weeks ago. <laughs> All right. Look at that fish, folks. <laughs> You know, we came back into an area and you can see how tight we're kind of fishing. And one thing I can help you out a little bit with, with your, with your fishing, this type of stuff and fishing this close is learning how to pitch. And I think Matt will agree with me on this one. This isn't an area that we want to make long casts to. 
So what you want to do is learn how to pitch, which put the bait in your hand like so, and, and toss it out there and then actually hit in pockets. If you learn how to pitch a bait, no matter what kind of rod and reel you're throwing, I do it with, with open face, with spinning outfits as well, you're going to catch a lot more fish and you're going to be a lot more accurate close to you like this in proximity. So uh, the, the biggest key I can tell you in fishing for me, when I, I do a lot of pitching and I know Matt does a lot of pitching. Absolutely. And I think that it's really important to learn how to pitch because trying to make a cast of something like that as close as it is, is really tough. So it's easier just to pitch out there and hit the little pockets. And especially when the sun's up, you can hit the little pockets where it's shady and, and throw up in there. But learning how to pitch is very key. And you'll see me do it a lot in the shows as well, even with drop shots. So, you know, learn how to do that pitching and you'll catch a lot more fish. How about that? Get him? Back off. <laughs> oh man, it's a minnow. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> hey, there's shad in this lake. There is big shad in this lake, isn't there? Yeah, I felt good Look when I first that. set the hook on him. Oh, he's not that, that bad. Shad. He's pulling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you want me to lift that monster? Yeah, no. Hold on, let me get that. Who <laughs> says that best, folks? <laughs> oh, I'll take it. From there, it looks pretty small. <laughs> but believe it or not, that's a well, 10. At least seven. <laughs> Good job, man. <Matt. laughs> oh, there's got to be a big one here. Just gotta be. <laughs> That's great. Oh, Priceless, yeah. dude. There he is. All right. <laughs> Oh, he's not very big. But... Just get him in the boat, I'm would you? I'm getting him. I'm getting him. Just get him in the boat. <laughs> not big, but they fight. He hammered it, huh? Yeah. He slug it? Yeah, he thumped it really That's good. That's what I'm talking about. He thought he was big. Just right before the weeds. <laughs> right before those reeds. <laughs> little guys Little buck bass, but it's a good bass. That's about the size you caught <laughs> just, just a minute ago. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> well. You know, that, that tells you a lot about the chigger crawl you get out here in this kind of stuff. And folks, you can have a lot of fun definitely fishing that chigger crawl, huh? Yeah, just imitates a crawdad. And if they are on beds, they don't like crawdads around their beds, right? <laughs> no, they don't like it at all. And what's really funny, I got to be honest, is we just went and picked up the boat this afternoon and uh, went and seen Matt and said, let's go get a show done. So it was a last minute deal for sure. And I appreciate you coming out hey. with us, dude. I do. Thanks for, <laughs> thanks for having me. It's always fun. I knew, I knew you'd been here. So I'm like, no, oh, well, let's go try it. Let's see what's up. One of, but, these, uh, one of these days we'll get on those big ones again, you know, that, yeah. we, did, that we did that one day. They're oh. just, just kind of tricky to catch sometimes, they're you know? They're here, they're here. And it's <laughs> tough because there's no sight fishing to be had right now. It's, it's all algae bloomed up, but we've had a good day. Caught a lot of fish. You can see what kind of what's going on. You don't have to be sight fishing to catch fish in the spring. You just need to make sure you're fishing shallow. Had a great day on the water with Matt Shura. We'll see you next week right here. I'm Johnny Johnson. <laughs> now, see, that's what I'm talking about, folks.